I really love farming. That's all I've ever done. I've always been around a farm all my life. Went with my daddy every day when I was small, walked in cotton fields, peanut fields, corn fields. I was unfortunate, I lost my mom when I was 17 and my daddy when I was 18 and I took over the farm at 18 years old. And this is our, my 40th crop. We got in the ground and this year. We live here in a small rural town in Georgia, close to Durham, Georgia. We grow cotton, corn, peanuts, beef cattle, and some wheat. And our biggest acreage every year is cotton. I love farming. I love getting up every morning and being able to come outside and outdoors. I wouldn't have any other way. Me, myself, I'm the second generation of this family farm, and I hope that my kids someday can be the third generation and continue it on for many more years. Ultimately, family's everything. And having the ability to wake up, come to work every day with my mom, dad, brother and sister, and the um, extended family that we have here as well, is an extreme privilege and honor. A privilege and honor that I wouldn't trade for anything in the whole world. You know, when you do something a long time for the same way, it's hard to change. Yeah, with my boys being involved, you know, and they're younger and see things and want to change. And there's been times it's been hard for me to make that decision to change, but once you change and get used to it, then you see the benefit from it. As we have moved into the um, middle part of the last decade, um, we went from doing some general conservation practices here in operation to really trying to ramp up the overall involvement we have inside of that sphere so that we can really make sure that we're managing the underlying asset of the land in a way that will make sure that land and its um, those resources last for years to come. So when I started working with Bart Davis, one of the things he said as far as his interest in doing a project like this is he already knows he wants to be a part of benefiting the land. Um, when I uh, brought to his attention the opportunity to use these pollinator plantings and these beneficial insect banks and things that he already had a personal interest in. He said, if I can increase my farm sustainability and productivity, but also help bring back something like the Bob Whites, I'll certainly give it a try. And that's all it took with Bart. So several years ago, the cotton industry set a series of environmental goals, and Cotton Incorporated is pretty involved in making that happen on the ground. I saw a presentation from a, a Quail Forever staff member on turning red acres green. And so we started thinking, how can we collaborate with Quail Forever and look at, at turning underperforming acres, changing management practices on those acres, and having a benefit to uh, increase grower profitability as well as wildlife habitat. By using the um, John Deere Op Center and other precision agriculture tools, we're able to make real-time decisions um, by capturing data as it's happening and be able to make engaged decisions as it applies to operation, not on the aggregate, but on an acre-by-acre -acre basis. Information is the most valuable commodity, and being able to have that real-time information at our disposal makes us to be able to be better managers, better conservationists, better farmers, all the above, day in, day out. One of the fun things about being here on the Davis Family Farm is that they're using data to manage their entire operation and then they work in collaboration with the, the conservation technical advisors that Quail Forever and Pheasants Forever have in order to better uh, look at how the land is being used and where are places where um, he could get more out of his land by putting it into some sort of a conservation world that helps the habitat here. It also helps him as a farm to, ha to have a more sustainable farm. And, So, how do you feel about this uh, planting? What was your goal? Our goals here was to, to try to take some uh, lower productive land, dry land out of production, and try to do, do something that's beneficial for the environment and wildlife and bees. 
Chaz helped us come up with this mix or whatever. There's 10 different uh, varieties of plants out here. Uh, there's some lagoons, some grasses, some seeded flowers. Yeah, and it, it looks great, especially since y'all planted it just earlier this year. You have, I mean, a lot of stuff coming up already. This is showy tixie here, and um, all these tall ones are evening primrose. But it's uh, it's really open. I mean, when you look at it, it looks real heavy, heavily vegetated, but it's not. I mean, it's real open at the bottom, so quail can move around and hide from predators in here and hopefully have some, some seed for feed. Yeah. You know. That's exactly what we want. We want to have that protective canopy overhead and then obviously space to move around and forage underneath. And, and I'm sure it's going to be beneficial for the quail. Actually, I hear one down there yeah, whistling now. It's a topic of conversation. Um, people, neighbors in our community go down the road, see these blooming corners of wildflowers and they come up and say, hey, what, what's going on in that corner? And we're able to share with them our experiences and how we're trying to be better conservationists. It's my hope that the pollinator habitat is the first step in what will be many future endeavors um, within the sphere of conservation. So I look forward to the opportunity to um, install more habitats going forward, not only for pollinators, but other wildlife as well. I think it's just, I uh, feel like, you know, being a good steward of the land and, you know, taking care, care of your land and, and, and taking, taking all your natural resources and using them to the fullest extent but trying to protect them all at the same time. So the work that we're doing with the Davis family is demonstrating that conservation and productivity can go hand in hand. It's not contradictory anymore. And so profitability, sustainability, conservation is a way to fully uh, fulfill the needs for every family farm. Let's put our hands together. It is our honor and privilege to award you the 2021 Precision Ag Farmer of the Year Award presented by John Deere. John Deere is very pleased to be able to award Bart Davis and the Davis Family Farm the Precision Ag Farmer of the Year Award this year as a part of Quail Forever, Pheasants Forever. It's been a partnership for us for about three years now and uh, very, very important for us in terms of our mission to, to really help farmers in their, in their drive to be more sustainable. It means a lot to us, our family, to win this Precision Ag Award for this year. It's just a tremendous honor in that people can look to us and ask, you know, what are you guys doing and how can I do that in my operation? And to be afforded that um, is a tremendous honor. My daddy always taught me, he said, son, take care of your land and take care of your equipment and it'll take care of you.